This morning, before we proceed, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, some guests among us. All of us are important. If your name is not mentioned, doesn't mean we didn't recognize you, but we'll introduce you. And as time goes on, we'll keep on uh, updating you all, updating you all who join us. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, uh, by the grace of God, in the chair, we have our own father, uh, the district pastor for Boston District, the Church of Pentecost, uh, Pastor Francis and Mrs. Um, uh, Mrs. Uh, hallelujah. Yeah, our mom is here, Mrs. Ajapon. Please, let's give it up for them. Hallelujah. Adelaide. Adelaide. Hallelujah. Our guest pastor, district pastor, uh, overseer, Che, or he, or he need che for. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's currently at Rehoboth uh, in New, uh, New Jersey region. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's recognize, let's acknowledge him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And in our midst, we have, uh, in our midst, Pastor. We also have Pastor Daniel Adakwa, hallelujah. Amen. Christ Pentecostal International Church in Portacate, hallelujah. Amen. We have Honorable Pa Kwesi Indum, hallelujah. Uh -huh. Pa Kwesi Indum. Uh, and he came with uh, our 
another father of ours, Honorable Pa, we live. Hallelujah. Amen. We also do an appreciate for us to recognize you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, let's give it up for them. And this morning, we have our mother, who is the widow. Uh, we welcome you. And we say we appreciate you coming. God richly bless you. I am your main servant who has just taken over the church in rural land here. My name is uh, Overseer Jacob Kujima and my wife Elizabeth Kujima. She's also here. Yes. Uh, at this Janja, the following has its purpose. The reason why we are guarded and with all humility, I will invite our pastor in chair, uh, Pastor Francis Ajepon, to, give, uh, to tell us the purpose of our gathering. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Amen. brothers and sisters, uh, friends, uh, our widow, and uh, family members, sympathizers. We just want to welcome each and every one of us here. Uh, the purpose for this gathering is that not long ago, the Lord called our dear Father. As it is written, Scripture says that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul has also made it clear that a time is coming when this earthly tent in which we dwell shall be taken out. But then there's hope. We have a hope in heaven. So this gathering is just to bid our father farewell. And then also to console the immediate family and all friends and loved ones who have gathered here. And so as uh, our MC rightly said, let us all follow the service with one heart. And as we do that, I know that the Lord also has something to share with those of us who are alive. It is a purpose, a purpose for this gathering. There's a great purpose for which you have been brought to this place. So we are not just bidding our Father farewell, but also the Lord is going to speak to somebody this morning. And the Lord bless us even as we celebrate our Father. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Uh, this morning, before we proceed, we will call uh, our deacon, uh, and Mrs. Uh, Dickness Kate, to give us one song, and after that, we'll be taking our scripture reading. So, those who are told them, please get ready. Oh, Yeah, cry. 
And by faith we can see it afar For the Father we over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there Oh, in the sea by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious song of the blessed, and our spirit shall soon no more. No more sign for the blessed. Sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore. Now, head, Apostle Samson, you are and family, the regional head for the New England region of the Church of Pentecost. Uh, has been sent away on assignment duty tour, and so I'm standing in for him. Um, please, he wants me to register his um, condolences to the family and also to wish you, um, tell you that he's with you in spirit and he's praying with the family wherever he is. So be assured that you are not standing alone. The Lord is also on your side. And the family of believers are also standing by you. Amen. Uh, at this moment, we would like to invite the following personnel to come and uh, give us the scripture reading. Uh, for the tree, we have our brother David Nyakum. And then in uh, English, we have our elder David Ose, who will be reading the English for us. Amen. Do me and Sako see Dum or Tree. Pachomia or Radia Sam. A Tifia Sam was a Radi Ba. And you are no one out of the Dana Hundia. You may see a simu saw some of you and who saw one Aka would near the Daswano. It did nine. Now see a giddy say yes to we. No, I saw the Bua, Saransun, and who bought the one out of the Dana Nam, yes to Subacan or Abba. to prevent to feel through the sun, the kiss of more for the sorry cane. I sign our bar of a fire now, a tear, see, Yaki Kaye, new one in our Munku Musa, Yakosia, Radia, we will. Let me get some more red. A radiant shot, I can cast him to my head. God bless you. I'm reading from First Thessalonians to four verses thirteen through eighteen. The death. The dead in Christ shall rise. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so then also which sleep in Jesus will will God bring with him. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds 
to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Brother, with these words, Amen. Amen. Uh, at this moment, we have one of our sisters who will be ministering, giving us a song. Uh, we are calling on our, this, uh, our sister Dickness Anita Amenyo to come and give us a song. And after that, uh, the person standing in to give us the biography should get ready. Uh, right after the song, he will come and read the bi biography of our dear father. Yeah. Amen. In all that we go through, indeed it is well with our soul. Hallelujah. Amen. When peace like a river has
moment, we will call on a family member who has been appointed to come and give us the tribute. of late Professor Stephen Kwame Ahmed. Stephen Kwame Ahmed was born in December 1953 to Mr. Kwame Bosumafi and Madame Araba Asiedu Wa, both of both blessed memory, both of his parents were from Anomabo in the central region of Ghana. Stephen was in the third of their 12 children. He received his elementary education at St. Paul Roman Catholic Primary School, and he was a bright student, even in those early years. Mr. Ament recall in Ms. Udro's class at the end of his first terminal examination. He was on top of his class, so he got the chance to be, to be the class prefect in class two. After his elementary education, Mr. Ahmed got admission to continue his education at St. Augustine College, all, Augustine College and all boys Catholic school in Cape Coast. Ghana, he was the first of his class during the speech giving day in his school, St. Augustine, and he won the prize on February 20th, 1967, was the first in his class and also top in four subjects to him. So he got a prize. His book's collection on the day include The Adventure of Huxbury Finn. Man, it is of whom no. Eh, shall say pardon him. Because of his academic excellency, in form five, in form five in secondary school, Mr. Ahmed took the America Field Series won the international scholarship so in the general of 1971 was when he went to Alessi Grand Minnesota USA on the ASC international scholarship from 1971 to 1972 academic year and he was also a great track runner he became known all over Minnesota for his skills. He came back to Ghana after his he came back to sorry, he came back to Ghana after he after this to complete his A levels at Gusto sorry, Gasto Gasto Vers Adolfold College in St. Peter's, Minnesota from 1974 to 1979. With ABA in January 1979, with two, with two concurrent degrees in biology and classes, even in the midst of some health challenges. What an impressive work experience. He taught at I T I Hamedia Secondary School in Kumasi, Ghana for 10 years, work at Texas Instrument in at Lebolo, Massachusetts for 10 years, and adjacent professor at Rohan Island College for 17 years. They are African living with depression in America, published in 2010. Goodbye, Mr. Politician, published in 2012. The Prophet and the Priest, the third one is The Prophet and the Priest, published in 2015. Mr. Ahmed was married to Arin Abe Afriye Ahmed. Their union was blessed with 
three children, Fabian Ahmed, Fifi, Nora Ahmed, Na Nana, and Sharon Iresi Ahmed, all living in the United States of America. We remember and celebrate the life of Mr. Ahmed today, of a life live well with a lot of academic achievement and accomplishment in life. He was general soul. He loved people, rose about the challenge of challenges of life. You are forever in our hearts. Your wife, your immediate and extended families, your friends and your colleagues, rest in peace till we meet again. So let's do it well. We are here and we are thinking about what he has done. It, his life should motivate us to, to also press on and achieve the academic excellence that our father was able to attain and also not forgetting our maker. Hallelujah. The um, program is number four. Captain of Israel's and God Abenya and then Silas Obediah will also be saying something brief uh, as a tribute to farewell their dear friend. So we we'll humbly invite the representative or whoever is standing in for our mother, the widow, to give us the tribute. And right after that, the children will follow. Alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. 
my Jesus is alive. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, my Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, my Jesus is alive. Amen. 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 So I'm standing here on behalf of my dear Auntie Irene Abe Afriye Mens, otherwise affectionately known as Mama. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will all be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. And this is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 51 to 53. It is a fact of life that this mortal body of ours does not live forever. Life indeed comes to an end at some point for all of us. The life of my husband, Prof. Stephen Kwame Menz, came to an end on July 22nd in the year of 2022. What a shock. Life sometimes has surprises for us. I met my husband of blessed memory in Kumasi the very first day he came to Ghana from the USA. The first meeting led to a lifelong relationship. During our courtship days, he wanted to surprise me with something and I remember that on one occasion, he brought me a crate of eggs to enjoy, and lo and behold, he did not know that they had sold him cooked eggs. How we laughed. My husband was a kind and generous, loving man, and so when our relationship got to a serious level, he then asked for my hand in marriage. Our union was blessed with three children, Fifi, Nana, and Sharon. We were all very fond of their father. I thank the Lord for the opportunity I have had to be able to live with my husband in the USA, learning new cultures and new ways of doing things. I was a supportive wife to him stood with him through thick and thin, and with the Lord on our side, I was able to take care of him for so many years in the face of so many overwhelming health issues that he had. My husband adored me so much that he called me mama, and I called him prof. He always wanted the best for me. I remember when we were in Ghana and my mom prepared food for us, he would ask her to give me the best part of the meat because he said, that is what I liked. He let me have everything, Prof. Lenz. Was not materialistic at all. His favorite words to me was, Mama, you know that I don't need the money. If you need it, you can have it. He was so generous that he would empty his pockets and give it to those he thought needed it more than him. I think it was because of his goodness and generosity to people that God mercifully extended his life to this time, even in the midst of lifelong, overwhelming health challenges. It is my fervent prayer that God will give me and my children the spirit of generosity. I've never seen a man who was so generous, a man who gave all to his people, 
all to people. In all this, I thank God for the life of my husband and his ability to overcome the trials and tribulations of life. He never lost his sense of humor. He was a good conversationalist and he took care of his extended family in Ghana. Life is a mystery and death is a mystery, but we have hope. Hope that one day God will make all things new. <laughs> myself and the children, Fifi, Nana, and Sharon, to say rest in perfect peace till we meet again. We will always cherish you. As people who have hope, hallelujah, Amen. because we know where our father is going. Amen. He's not, he has given his life to Christ, and we know that he's in a better place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not lost. So let's encourage ourselves with these words. Amen. Amen. So the children will follow by giving us the tribute, and right after that, the church will come. I wouldn't come here again. Right after the children, the church will follow. Amen. It is with a very heavy heart that I stand before you today to think that I have lost my dad, my best friend, the one who was always there for me all the time. It is very, very sad before my brother Fifi and my sister Nana join us from Ghana. It was just me, my dad, and my mom. My dad always took me to the library. He helped me to choose my I mean, to choose books. He sat with me and read with me. My dad has so much time for me. He made me feel so special. He even went bike riding with me. When you got sick, it was my prayer and my desire that you would get better. Why did you have to leave us so soon? But I know that you are at a better place with our Lord in heaven. I know for sure that one day I will see you again. I will forever miss you. Love you, Dad. Rest in peace. Goodbye. Until we meet again. Are you mad, bro? that he had raised because it was not easy. <laughs> he gave us all to everyone that needed it without the slightest hesitation. <laughs> if you knew my dad, you knew that he had a way of infecting everyone with his jokes and laughter no matter where he was. My dad always said, you, you took after me. And I'm proud of that. This will always make me smile 
and want to work harder in life. I wish you were here to meet your first grandchild, but God always knows what's best. I know you will be with us in spirit, and we will keep your memory strong and alive for as long as we live. We love you, Dad. Good morning, everybody. Um, before I say anything, if you look at the, uh, in, in the program, I never actually wrote a whole lot. Um, I just wanted to, like, you know, say something just, you know, by re uh, remembering what he used to do and what he used to say. Um, but before I do that, I'd like us to acknowledge a very important person, and that is my mom. If we could just stand and clap for her. She did very well. She's She can sing this. Uh, this is my dad's favorite song. So just uh, please sing along with me. Um, I don't have a very good voice, but we'll try. And Sam um, <laughs> live your legacy and um, just be proud of everything that you did. Um, if there, there will be like, you know, a continuous uh, a people, everybody that knew my dad will always say how kind he was. Mm -hmm. So when my dad died, he only had uh, $3 in his wallet. It wasn't because he was broke. Yeah. But you know how millionaires and billionaires sign packs that before they die, they will give all their money away? My dad never signed any pact. He never said anything. He just gave his money away to everybody that needed it. That's how generous my dad was. He always talked about how he was proud of his children. You know, he was, I was sitting with him when he passed at the hospital. It's one of the hardest things that you'd ever see. I didn't want to be there, but I had to be there. I didn't want to see him die, but I had to be there and be with him. <laughs> I love my dad. I love him so much. And I know wherever he's at, he's looking down on us. He's very proud of us. And he's always smiling. So it's, it, it is a sad day. But I just want everybody to smile and be happy as well. Thank you very much. The church the friends from St. Augustine College who uh, bring their tribute. Good morning. Honoring the life 
of Professor Stephen Kwamna Mens by the Church of Pentecost Royal Assembly and Men's Ministry, Pema. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For this to end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. Romans chapter 14, verse 7 to 9. Professor Stephen Kwamna Mens, affectionately called Uncle Kwamna, was affable, compassionate, and a living human being. Uncle Kwamna devoted his life to Rhode Island Pentecost Assembly and Men's Ministry, in particular, Permian. And as a result, was elected Secretary of the Ministry. Due to his love for God's work and his eloquence in the English language, he held the post for four years and performed his work effectively. No wonder he was English professor. Uncle Kwamna attended all permanent meetings within the former New England region and now New England region. He traveled both far and near without hesitation. Not mentioning his presence in all our meetings, preaching during discussions at church is remarkable and very encouraging. Uncle Kwamna was a very kind hearted man. His presence conveyed the message of hope, calmness, and sense of ease. Uncle Kwamna would say, Eja Sam, obey ye. He was a respectable member within the Church of Pentecost, as well as the Ghanaian community in Rodala. He was once a member of the Ghana Association and its vicinity, a devoted man who carried an aura of love, selflessness, warm-heartedness, peaceful, and dependability. His patience, loyalty, and commitment to his church, Temem in particular, and the work entrusted in his care made him more respected to the point that he would do everything possible to see Temem thrive. Uncle Kwamna was incapacitated for about two years when he could no longer attend church services. While going through overwhelming challenges, he wished he could join his fellow congregants at church. The Church of Pentecost, the Pemem, and the whole community of Rhode Island have lost a very respected and resourceful person. The Lord gave you to us and the Lord has taken you away. Job 1.21. So we celebrate your passing away. And may the almighty God himself, who brought you here on earth, keep your spirit and soul till we meet again in his paradise. Professor Uncle Kwam Namens, a loving friend, brother, uncle, Father and husband, the year fare thee well. Amen. I, I stand here with my brother William Mensah and um, we are here to represent, I, I know that we were announced as friends from St. Augustine's, we were not friends, we were brothers. We consider ourselves 
the 1971 uh, brothers from St. Augustine's. A number of us went to St. Augustine's the same day, one day in September 1966. And from that day until now, we have all been together. We have been talking, helping each other, where necessary, consoling each other, supporting each other. And so when we received the news of the passing of our dear classmate, our brother, Professor Stephen Kwamna Mentz, we, we got it with, with, with deep sorrow because we know, we know how he supported and participated in everything that we did as the Absu 71 year group. So we are classmates from St. Augustine's College, proudly so. So he gained admission to Form 1, and as all of us, and then, like me, I did the American Field Service one year uh, here in the U.S. from 1970 to 1971. He did it from 1971 to 1972. Um, and so from that time on, he and a couple of us, um, we've also shared that history, that experience, which, is also, which also shaped our lives um, up until this time. We called him several names, but he also called himself several names. And he gave several names to all of our brothers. Everybody had a name from him. Um, so he was a very active and many times jovial classmate who liked, as I've said, to assign nicknames to others. So if you hear us uh, sometimes say Zibion, we don't know what Zibion means. But if you say Zibion, everybody knows who we are talking about. And then he will say Zibion. We don't know what Zebeni he means. It's part of a language he developed. And then he would say Dagra. Dagra, I don't know which language in Africa says Dagra. Then he would also say Menya Kofina Gromadzi Namelo. So when we also see him, we will say Zebeni. And he will say Dagra. Um, so that's how we greeted each other about six weeks ago um, and continued up until the time that we got the message that he was no longer with us. So he gave advice and was willing to share his experiences uh, with everyone. And it is no secret and no surprise to us that he was also very willing to share his knowledge with anybody who cared to listen and who cared to pay attention. So him getting into the teaching profession is also not a mystery to us because it came naturally uh, to him. So we know that yes, he was married, had three children, and, and, and that too, it was a remarkable thing with him that we had the opportunity to let Irene know that on our platform, we have an association of, of, of all of our brothers from St. Augustine's uh, who, who got out of Form 5 in 1971. We have a platform. And every time we talked, every now and then, he would show gratitude to his wife, to Irene. And, and was very, very, very open about it that she had, has been 
his support, his supporter, his helper, and a wonderful companion. She always said, if you get the chance to talk to her, say thank you to her for me. So we are standing here, we are standing here as witnesses to say thank you from our brother, Pamela. And he, he was a very active person from St. Augustine's uh, in athletics, in other fields. Um, certainly, he celebrated life like all of us. And when in 2016, we got together to, to celebrate our 50 years since we left St. Augustine's, all of us, him included, went back to St. Augustine's and shared our history, our lives, uh, what we were hoping to do uh, with each other. So we all traveled there and participated fully. We had hoped that last year we were also going to celebrate another reunion, but then COVID came and, and, and it didn't happen. And we all also made a promise that a number of us would travel to come here uh, to Portaket to see him. And also due to COVID and other things, it didn't happen. And so when we learned of his passing, we said, some of us must come here and bear testimony to the wonderful life that he left, lived to, with all of us and all of us as brothers. So that's why we are, we are here. We traveled from Chicago to come here. Um, and there are many others who are listening and trying to bear testimony in various ways in London, uh, in Houston, in California, definitely in Ghana and other places because there are about 66 active brothers from that group of people that went to St. Augustine's who are all still around and all associate with each other and who communicate every day on a, on a social media platform that we have. And um, it is difficult for all of us. We know it is even more difficult for his immediate family to see him here like this. And so we want to leave him, if, if my brother here uh, can sing along with me, with St. Augustine's, St. Augustine's has an anthem. And wherever we, we, we go, we also uh, leave that anthem, at least the first stanza. Uh, so, no kwanya bi som osabe Ebi fu katre fo Mwane nyim nyam Aso konkro nyi cheche nyi pa Mo ogesten Yen adam fo pa Ong tu nyi Mwane kane ba Te ya sor Na ju jwa ji yen we thank you very much. We appreciate your presence in our midst this morning. As he was being introduced, he's one of the flag bearers in the, one of the political parties in Ghana. So making time to be here, um, we know it's not easy. He's a busy, uh, busy man. But God bless you for making it and your words of encouragement to the family and all of us. Amen. Amen. We'll please invite our brother, uh, Dr. Buatin. Uh, he's going to say something very brief. And right after him, uh, we'll have our brother, uh, his friends, Eli uh, Abenya and Silas Obadiah, to also come and give a short presentation. And right after that, who listen to the word of God. Amen. Thank you. You know, as the pastor said, um, this, this trip is going to be very brief because of time constraints. Tribute for uh, Professor Kwame Namens. 
once in a lifetime, people get to meet an amazing person like Professor Mendes. Professor Mendes is an acclaimed scholar, lecturer, author, a great educationist, and a man of perfection. He's also a scholar of literature who has written so many books. I met Professor Mendes when we were both teachers at uh, Hope High School in Providence in Rhode Island here in the early 2000s. He was always on time and took his teaching assignment very seriously. Let me share with you um, a story I had with him one day at the school. During lunch break, he came to my classroom and said, uh, my daughter, you know, he always called me by that name. As a, um, you know, the presidential candidate, um, Dr. Ndoum was saying that he gives name to, you know, all his friends. And then he said, oh, I'm having a high time with my students. They don't want to learn or do their homework. All they want to do is play games and listen to music on their phones. So I want to have a meeting with the principal. Knowing him as a true educationist and a man of profession, I advised him to call the meeting off. Because the principal and the teachers, they are aware that most of these inner students do not want to take their studies very seriously. And then knowing him as someone who cares about his students, he always wants them to succeed in their chosen careers. Last month, when I visited him at the hospital, he was very upbeat, and we had a discussion about our experiences as teachers when we were teaching in a white-dominated you know, profession. As William Shakespeare said in the tragedy of Jerusalem, Caesar, Pro, you have crossed the river Rubicon, and there's no turning back. But that's not the end. As a true Christian, we will meet again in heaven. As we used to say in Latin, you are truly a uh, primus inter pares, which is like first among equals. Fairly well, my fellow educator, to arrange his widow and the children, I wish you strength and love from those closest to you and warm memories that will last forever. Amen. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Silas Opidaya, and this is my good friend, uh, Mr. Eli Abwenya. And uh, we've been great friends with Kwame, uh, Stephen Mans, Professor Stephen Mans. We call him Kwame because we are very close friends. Uh, for, the past, for the past 25 years. Uh, so uh, we, we, we know him very well, and I want you to listen to what we're going to say. Um, I'm a Nigerian, and I never knew that I, I used to be a little bit scared of Ghanaians. Why? Because when I was in high school, our English teacher was a Ghanaian, and he was a very strict disciplinarian. And whenever you did anything wrong, he beat the hell out of you. So, so I never knew that I could be close to a Ghanaian again until I met this guy. And then, of course, until I met um, Kwame, uh, Professor Stephen Mess. And that changed my perception of Ghanaians. And till today, I want to make more Ghanaian friends. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, I met Kwame in 1996. I went to Rhode Island College to look for a job in the African American Studies Department. When I went there, there was some handsome Ghanaian sitting down. He was very happy to see me. And of course, we started talking. And luckily for us, we were hired. 
and he repeatedly referred to that incident. You know, he always said, you know, uh, Silas, you know, it's God who wanted us to meet. Uh, Steve never, Kwame never believes, believes in coincidence. He always thinks that it's God who plans things, and he was the one who brought us together because he wanted us to be friends. And what I got to know about Professor Steve, right from the moment I, I met him, was just the fact that he's a very caring person. He's an excellent listener. Uh, he is very knowledgeable, uh, very helpful. And then the cornerstone of his existence was his family. You know, right from that time, you know, he told me when we met that first time, you know, Silas, I already have a job at TI, but I need a second job because I want to provide for my family. My family means a lot to me. And because uh, by that time, his family was in Ghana. So, um, so we, it is from that meeting, after, okay, after I met him, I realized that this was a very interesting person, and I said, okay, I must introduce him to this other Ghanaian who is standing here with me. We are almost the same height. <laughs> 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 so, um, so we, of course, we, we, I, I, I introduced him, and then that is how we started um, this long friendship, in which um, Eli has this habit of any time I... He, we, I want to talk to him. He would say, you know, we should bring Kwame online because he's just a very interesting person. He makes people laugh and he's very entertaining. And so we always ended up having a three-way conversation. Okay, what he calls a threesome. <laughs> yes. Then, um, but, uh, so, so we, we, we get Kwame to entertain us. And then, of course, uh, the more you talk to Kwame, the more you know that he knows a lot. Um, um, since, since he passed, any time I'm talking to Ellie now, he said, you know, your yeah, discussion is no longer interesting because Steve is not here. And so, yeah, and so any time we have a problem, particularly um, Ellie will bring up a word, you say, by the way, what does this word mean? And I will say, I don't know. He will say, well, you know, if Kwame were here, he would have told us what the word means. And how did Kwame become so intelligent? You know, he, he studies classics. And classics provides you um, with the root word for almost all the English words. So anytime you mention an English word, um, he knows, uh, Kwame could speak, um, he could understand Greek, uh, Latin, French. Uh, French, and Spanish. Yeah. And, and so anytime you mention a word, he knows the root um, origin of the word that he could just easily come up with a minute. So that made him somebody very knowledgeable. I remember once I went to a Dunkin' Donuts with him. By the way, um, Hannah always laughs at us that we, uh, we spend too much time at Dunkin' Donuts. So I was at Dunkin' Donuts with him and what do you think happened? Um, some people were speaking in Spanish. I don't understand a word of Spanish. Okay, I know hola. Hola said, means hello. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and, then, and then Steve responded to that. And then I asked him, what are they saying? He said, you know what? They are saying that they always see us together. Maybe we might be gay. And I, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, and I, and I kind of found that funny. But he answered them in Spanish and told them that we are very good friends. We have our own families. And that uh, we were just good friends. And we just love hanging out and to talk. So and that was that was, that was all. So um, then then of course um, as we get got to know more of Steve, we also came to understand that his wife is very very important in his life. Um, Kwame was always telling me how how he met his wife. That is something he told me several times. Somebody has already said, told us how he met his wife. But the one story he always told me about his wife, which he must have told me 20 times. You know, I had to keep telling him, Kwame, you told me that before. He said, no, I must, <laughs> I must tell you again. Um, he was telling me, he told me about an incident that happened when he was in the hospital in Kumasi. 
he said it was a very rainy day, and, and then what happened, he said his wife, you know, that time they did not have a car, and then what happened, he told me how I rained, um, came to see him in the hospital, and she said that she came, she had been beaten by the rain, she was carrying things on her head, and she walked through the rain, carrying a very heavy load just to come and see him in the hospital. And uh, anytime he told me that story, there were tears of appreciation in his voice. And, and, and that is why, like he always told me, that if anyone, he, says, he said if his, if his wife died before him, he said he wouldn't know what to do with his life. And so he always said, I would rather die first. Yes, he said that many times. And then, and then the other thing is this. Um, Talking about Irene, we I went to um, we went to his house once, and then he has this. When you go to Kwame's living room, <laughs> okay, I, I am I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about my I'm talking about my friend. Okay, I'll be done in a minute. Okay, <laughs> so um, so what what happened was that. Um, uh, we were in the living room and all the happened. You know, he has, uh, he has these pictures of his certificates and then a big, a large picture of his, uh, of his family. And he said, he, said, he said, you know, these are my angels. These are the angels God sent into my life to be with me and, and to take good care of me. And then, and then what do you think happened? Um, he, and then um, he always, as much as he refers to his... his um, his family as angels, Irene was always angel number one. When he was not well, you know, immediately he was beginning to have an, an episode. He, say, he would say to me, you know, you have been my friends for a long time, but it's always Irene who knows um, when I need to go to the hospital. So, so believe me, I've met a lot of uh, people, but I've never met, uh, I've never met somebody who just kept talking about his wife, appreciating. I know we Africans, we don't like to tell our wives, oh, you are cute, you are so wonderful. <laughs> because, I don't know why, maybe because. <laughs> okay, just one. Hallelujah. Our father will okay. continue, they will continue their tribute during the final funeral rite. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, so finally, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, so uh, uh, finally, um, Kwame is one of the greatest persons I've ever met, and his, his, um, his, his hope was to leave behind um, a legacy, particularly for his family. He always said, look, I want to leave a great legacy for the men's family to, to build on, and I think he has. So um, we should be very proud of him. I'm very happy that I met him. I'm very happy I got to know him. And he and Eli and I, Eli, by the way, Eli has the best basement in the world, and we always, we always um, would miss not having Kwame with us. So um, we thank God, we thank Ghana for um, having somebody like Kwame, and he has been a blessing in our lives, and we're going to miss him. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Praise the Lord. I didn't know what. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for this moment. We are still in the presence of the Lord as we bid farewell to our dear Father, Uncle, our dear Professor. He is our everything. And I remember when I got here in 2019 and he realized that I attended T.I. Amadea he took me as his own. And whenever we talk, you could see the passion of how he would want to give everything that is within him to whoever he meets. Even when he was sick and was at home, he would still join our men's ministry meetings. That is how much Prof was passionate about the things of God.
Jesus. fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in this body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, we would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please Him. That means seat of Christ. So that each of us may receive what is due us. The things done while in the body. Whether good or bad. Amen. Amen. This morning I'm speaking to the team left home. But Gone home. Left home. But gone home. Or free feeding. But I can assure you that he is at a better home in heaven. And so, as believers, we do not grieve when we die. For the apostle has said that even for himself, yes, that he will be at home. And in these verses that we just read, the apostle contrasts between the earthly and the eternal. And he began by saying, For we know. This morning, for Mr. Mens, he knew. But what do you know? The apostle was very bold enough to say, we know, with no doubt, he was assured of the fact that when he is not in this earthly tent, he has a heavenly tent, a place of dwelling that he will be. What do you know? That we will all know. And all Christians must come to the place of knowing that when we are out of this early tent, there is a heavenly dwelling place. The apostle didn't say that, I think. He emphasized, we know. We know that in this early tent, we live in is destroyed. 
we have a building for God, an eternal house. So this brings to light. If you are seeing him when he was sick, the man had gone through pain in this early tent. It's time that he could not even walk. Rest assured in my spirit that thinking is in no pain. It's a place for you and I that there is no pain. And let us endeavor instead of our heavenly power so that what is more time may be swallowed up by that. For this early tent is death. And when this early tent has gotten to its end, which is death, the heavenly dwelling place takes over. So the guarantee of the fact that we will receive our heavenly dwelling place is that the Holy Spirit has come to live in us. And God has given us a spirit. And so he continues to say, therefore, we are always confident. So when we're reading these things, you might think that our oh, apostle is a proud man. Apostle Paul was not proud. When he's talking about the fact that he is confident, he was so sure of what he has believed. I pray that if you're a believer here, may you be confident in your faith. Amen. Know Jesus that you have believed. Even though we do not see him with our eyes, but we know by revelation that we will not live on earth forever. But after we are gone, I pray that we will attain our heavenly dwelling place, which he has prepared for us. So he continues to say in verse 6, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. What, the, what is he trying to say? He said, in the previous verse that as we are at home in this body we are away from the Lord what it means is that when we are home in our flesh we are away from God but this life that we are living at home in the flesh we live it by faith and not by sight but the life that we will live in the next age we will live it by sight because in our heavenly dwelling we will see him just as he is I pray that you will see Jesus. I attended Professor Men's funeral. I knew the Lord. Amen. I found Jesus. And even when I am not existing here on earth, I know that is not the end of my life. I pray this will be your word. We have come to this funeral service. We are bidding him farewell for him to rest at his own heavenly dwelling place. But for you, where would you be? I pray that the Lord will have mercy on us. Amen. That whilst we are living here in this earthly tent, we will live as people with a purpose. So Paul said, we make it our goal to please him. Brothers and sisters, my dear fathers, uncles, make it your goal. To please the Lord. Amen. And there are victories to be won. Give me power. Every hour to be true. Oh, there is a race that I must run. And there are victories to be won. Give me power. Every hour to be true. Oh, give me true. Also has made it clear to us that when this earthly tent is destroyed there is a new house that is built for us in heaven that was not made by man's hand that is where we should keep in focus and seek to please the Lord because definitely 
a time is coming when we shall leave this tent. Where I have the opportunity to celebrate the life of our professor who has been called to glory. If there is anything left out that I am not doing, Lord, of God, take the opportunity and commit your life into the hands of God. Nobody can take my place on earth when I am called out of this earthly dwelling. But when I seek the eternal dwelling, nobody can take my place. Those of us who have found Christ and have given our life to you, as long as we seek to please you, know we very well that the time is coming when we shall leave this earthly tent. We will have hope. There is no more death. Come and help us, Lord. In Jesus' name. I just want to invite the pastors to join me even as we pray for the because of the vacuum that is created. Imagine your loved one is traveling to a land, a distant, that you will not see him for a while. Sometimes you shed tears. And so we Paul say we should weep, but also not as those who have no hope. Mm -hmm. And so we are all going to pray for our dear ones, that the Lord will continue to be their counsel. The Lord will strengthen them. The Lord will empower them. Lift up your voice and pray, Father Lord. Commit these ones, Lord. Love ones of Mr. Stephen Benz, who we are called to glory into your hands, Lord. Mama Irene and the kids and the grandchildren, oh God. Commit them into your hands, Lord. The Lord, this is the time they need you more. Support them and empower them. Give them faith, God, to continue in you, my Lord. The race set aside, Lord, that they will be able to finish. And when they are done, what's on earth, dear God? When the time comes for them also to be called, Lord, we shall see our Father in your glory. Reigning, O God, in your glory. And all glory and honor shall be given to you. We trust that, Lord, you will support them whenever they need support, whenever they need advice, whenever they need encouragement. Any sort of support that our Father was giving to them that now he has been called, you will give the same support and even more and strengthen and empower them in Jesus' mighty name. At this point, we will ask Pastor to pray for the family. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise for the Bible says that in everything we should give you praise. Yes. Lord, we soak them in your blood. Amen. Spirit of living God, when we leave, they will go home by themselves. And upon the time left, they need you as never before. Lord, throw your light onto them. Amen. Shine your face onto them. Amen. Put the smile in their faces. Amen. Put the peace in their heart. Yes. Go ahead of them and make every cooker with strength. Amen. Spirit of living God, yes. they need you. Strengthen them. Amen. Comfort them. Amen. Jesus, you said I have to leave. Mm. Because it's for your good. Mm. You have to open upon your life. Amen. That the Holy Spirit will dwell among you. Amen. After this, in the chaos, in the apathy. Any conflict, separation, that the devil walk us straight. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we need unity throughout the family Amen. and your church. Amen. Lord, anytime that you you plug it out, you replace. My Lord, replace. Amen. We give you praise. Amen. We commit the rest into your hands. Even the friends that are here, those who came from far and near. My Lord, if anybody is here that doesn't know you, Spirit of living God, reveal yourself to us. All of us, reveal yourself to us. Let us know you and know the power of your resurrection. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you because you are called it done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 So we leave the rest to the MC. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Make a rough, make a tree, because I know most of us are Ghanaians and most of us are from here that they cannot understand the Ghanaian language. But because of it's our tradition, I'm going to speak Ghanaian language. Amen. Amen. 
so many years from Ghana to America. It's me ni ni enti a me Paul me hat me ni ni enti a me sumu. If you say me who say me ni anwa ere wa bre, but say ene e jihana onyami a adam wa friend me samensa. Mama and say onti me share mama me samensa kosa. Ano pay okra ne kate ni sumi e ne blanket ene ni senti a bre. Mama said a near brie. It will cry any brain soldier. You better be a soa, you better be a catamus a man's so. Now, you are still being so at your booty. The master said, Oh, crow, bad time and Indian Babiji. And I'm saying, Mr. Mess, your bad time and more will be piano. Now, the ma and the pair of money are brie, pa, because you're free of beer and a family book of fee. One more day, my book of school. Oma ba kama ma ba ta oba pata ebe ka ba ta omo na fifi na na Sharon omo no wan tuko fi. Eti di omo ka ni se dada de ye de ye de ye amen. Ah! <laughs> 
められるじゃないやってばっかあげさげもーあー、ダメダメあー、ダメダメダメダメダメダメダメ
Zion Oh, 
of men for a thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by or like a watch in the night you sweep men away in the sleep of death they are like new grass of the morning though in the morning it springs up new by evening it is dry and withered we are consumed by you and terrified by your indignation you have set our iniquities before you, mm. our secret sins in the light of, our, of your presence. Under your wrath, mm. we finish our years away under your wrath. Mm. We finish our years with a month. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, 80. If we have the strength, yet their span is but trouble and sorrow. In with your unfailing love, we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. For as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants. Your splendor to their children. May the favor of our Lord God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands for us. Amen. Amen. For as much as it has pleased the Almighty God by His great mercy to take unto Himself the soul of our dear father, brother, uncle, Professor Stephen Menz, here departed, we commit his body to the ground. F to F, ash to ash, dust to dust, in sure setting, hope of the resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our bodies of humiliation that it may be like his glorious body according to the mighty working, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. 
Amen. 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 So at this time, we will ask our dear pastor, Chepa, to pray, giving us we leave the rest in the hands of the directors. We want to thank you once again for the life of our dear father, Professor Stephen Mentz, the many years that you gave him as a gift to the family, to your church, the whole world at large. Father, even at this time, as we commit the body to the ground, we are in sure hope that it is going to where it came from, that as you took dust and made the body, we commit it back to where it came from. But for the spirit and the soul of man, it was your breath that you breathed into us. And that one, Father, it has come to you. And so we are grateful. And, oh God, you continue to watch over the family. May you be their covering. After all of us have left, and Father is just left with our dear Dickness, may you comfort her. Amen. Amen. Nobody is there. The children will cast their eyes around and they wouldn't see any friends. You are the best friend of friends. Amen. May you be to their aid. Amen. Now funeral rise tonight. Let your presence lead us. As you have done since morning. We have all called to give you praise. May your name alone be praised. Even as we do this to your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Now we are going to receive the benediction from our Reverend Fijima. Yeah. Shall we receive the benediction? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and forever. Amen. 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 God bless you all, brothers and sisters.
Yeah.